So today, I want to talk to you about Fleshy McFleshy. Hi, this is Sea Life TV with Daryl Chesser. Fleshy McFleshy. I know, catchy title, isn't it? Well, today I want to read from one of the writings I did just recently, and it is about the flesh to some degree, but it's an important part of our doctrine, uh, the doctrine of Jesus Christ in the epistles, uh, as they wrote the epistles, the uh, disciples, this was an element they came, kept coming back to to stress, especially Paul, and said, hang on to this part. So let's begin. We're starting in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 18 in the NIV. This is the writer of Hebrews, and he talks about Jesus of Nazareth, our Messiah. Since the children have flesh and blood, he, Jesus, or Yeshua, too, shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. I don't know whether it's by starvation or poverty or sickness or disease or war or famine or pestilence or, or whatever, the, the fear of death, in other words, maybe even socially, to be embarrassed to death, to be shamed or humiliated to death, to lose every, the fear of death is mixed up in almost every decision of a human in some way or another. The death of a relationship, the death of your flesh, the death of your finances, the death of your future, the death of the planet, the, the fear of death, which is just ludicrous. It's, well, it's rational if you're not born again, but it's ludicrous in the believer. Dude, we've already died. Yes, this body's gonna go. This flesh will die too, but we've already secured eternal life in Christ Jesus. Okay, let me go on. For surely it is not angels that he got, God helps, but Abraham's descendants. In other words, God didn't send Jesus Christ to this earth to help the angels or the demons or the spiritual world or the planets or the stars or even the animals. He sent them for Abraham's descendants. Uh-oh. Wow. And for this reason, he had to be, talking about Jesus now, for this reason, Jesus had to be made like them, like humans, like flesh, bone, and blood, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement, he might pay for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted right now. He lived as one of us. Jesus Christ came and lived as one of us, born of a woman and completely human and completely God. He was tempted in every way such as we, but he did not sin. It would have been impossible for him to sin. There was no sin in him. And there was nothing, as one of the Gospels points out, it says, uh, or Jesus himself said, he goes, Satan has come and he has found nothing in me. No hook. There's, there's no condemnation or there's no, there's no seed of sin in there that I can activate was what Satan, what Jesus was saying about Satan or sin. There was no sin in him because he was not uh, born of a man. He was born of a woman. God was his father and there was no sin passed along in the blood. All the blood comes from the man. I didn't know if you knew that. I was... It wasn't until about a few, just a few years ago I knew that. And, uh, but no, all of the blood comes from dad. Anyway, so let's go on. We just read, uh, read Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 through 18. So let me begin to read what I wrote. It is very important to know and declare that Jesus was a flesh, bone, and blood human born of a woman. He suffered for us as a human, not because he was forced to, but because he willingly walked in this suffering 
because of the Father's love for mankind, you and me, and also for his own love for this scrappy race called men. One of the reasons we are to remember the body and the blood and of Jesus Christ in communion is to continually reinforce that Jesus was a flesh man. He was a human and fully God as well, and he walked among us. This is very important because there were heresies that started not long after uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that began to spiritualize him as, well, he didn't come in the flesh. It was, it was just a spiritual thing, uh, a revelation. And you're going, no, he, he actually did come in the flesh. And you're saying, people can't deny that. I'm going, sure. I mean, people deny the Holocaust right now, right today. People deny that the earth is round right today. People will rewrite history and deny all truth and reality. I mean, that's just the way of human, humanity. So we are the most fortunate among all mankind, those of us who have been born again and received the truth of our Savior and Lord, Jesus Christ. Because of his suffering as a human being, he is able now to give us aid and comfort for everything that we face in this world as our faithful and eternal high priest. As John the Apostle wrote in his gospel, uh, I mean, in one of his epistles, uh, I think 1 John 4, 17, as he is, as Christ is today, so are we in this world. He's been here. He's seen it. He's done it. Christ Jesus, he walked among the sick. He walked among the dead. He walked among the hungry. And he used the power of God and the grace of God and the mercy of God to feed them. And he, he healed them, laid hands on them. He cast out devils everywhere he went. And uh, he healed the sick. All manner of sickness. I mean, everything. So he already knows about this. So as he is today, let me ask you this. As John wrote, as he is, so are we in this world. So let me ask you, does Jesus have worries today? No, no, I, I mean, you're sitting, at, he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's rested, he's, he's already assured the victory over Satan and death and hell and the grave. It's already a done deal. We are already living in this great promise of eternal life. Those of us who have believed Jesus Christ came in the flesh, that he suffered for us, that he died for us, and that he was resurrected for us. That faith activates the grace of God to come flood us and, and make us new and wash us clean. So now let me ask you about, does Jesus have cancer today? What about diabetes or autism? How about debt or fear or any other, or any other thing that tries to steal, kill, or destroy? Does Jesus have any of those things today where he is? No. Then, as he is today, so are we in this world. Jesus himself told us, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation. There's a lot of junk going on here. But be of good cheer. I, Jesus Christ, have overcome the world. Now, as he is, so are we in this world today. God loves you greatly and completely. And Jesus is the Savior, the Messiah, our great high priest working on our behalf. That's his whole job. A, whole, a, a priest's job is to represent the people to God. He is the one that goes before God and says, here's these guys' offerings in their worship. And God says, is it proper? He goes, Look at me. Yep. Jesus cleans up our stuff, our imperfect prayers and our imperfect worship in our, in our imperfect doctrine. He takes it on board and he makes it acceptable and pleasing to the Father and offers it as an acceptable sacrifice because it is Jesus Christ whom we've come to and said, you're my offering. You are my prayer. You are my hope. You are my everything, Jesus Christ. You, you're pleasing the Father. Your good deeds, your good thoughts, your 
absolutely doing the law and the will of God all the way to the grave and dying for us in our place, in our stead, and being raised in the, from the dead for us so that you would be firstborn among the dead. Firstborn. That means there's a lot more coming, and I'm one of them. Is Jesus worried about you today? No. Nah. He's given a nod over to the Father going, dude, look at him. They're doing great. And I know we look at each other and go, they're not doing great. They're not, I'm not doing great. But Jesus is saying, yep, they're doing good. So Jesus now is working on our behalf, securing every spiritual and earthly blessing from our heavenly Father for you and I today and for anyone who will put their faith in Jesus Christ. So today, I want to bless you. I want to say uh, one of the verses out of Acts that uh, I thought, I think it was Peter and Silas or Paul and Barnabas, somebody, I think it was Peter. The jailer, you know, their, their, their chains fell off. There was a great earthquake after prayer and all of the prison doors flew open and, and the chains fell off all the prisoners and there were these two disciples that had been in this prison and the jailer was freaking out. He knew his life was forfeit now. These prisoners were going to escape and that's the way it was. You're the jailer, you let the prisoners escape no matter the reason, your life is forfeit. So the jailer comes running to them and says, what must I do to be saved? Put whatever words you want there. What must I do to be healed? What must I do to be, uh, uh, become out of debt? What must I do to be fortunate and, 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 and happy in this realm and righteous? What must I do to be saved? from certain destruction eternally, from certain destruction physically, from certain destruction financially, from certain destruction emotionally and spiritually and relationally, what must I do to be saved? And their answer was this, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. And you know what the guy did? He believed, he received Jesus Christ his whole family received Jesus Christ. They were baptized and, and, and walked in great joy and peace and wholeness because Jesus Christ is the answer to everything as he is. So are we in this world. I don't care what situation you're facing. As he is today, so are you in this world. He's not sick. He's not broke. He's not concerned about politics. He's not concerned about the world situation. He's not concerned about the neighbors. He loves you. And the Father in heaven loves you. And they know us completely. And his Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit resides in us now. And he, he loves us and he's building us up and he knows every step. And his job is to continue to reaffirm in you and correct and say, listen, you are the righteousness of God. God is pleased with you because of your faith in Christ Jesus, because Jesus Christ is your offering. Abel, we don't know anything about Abel, except for he gave the right offering to God. That's it. And his brother killed him. We know two things. He was the son of Adam and Eve and his brother Abel gave an improper offering, one of works, one of healthy eating, <laughs> one of discipline, whatever you want to say. And the other guy, all we know is he offered blood or a lamb. We don't know if Abel was a good guy or a bad guy, a slothful guy. We have no idea what this guy was. We only know one thing and that God was looking at. He brought the right offering. And for that, his brother hated him. As Jesus is, so are we in this world. If you have the right offering today, that offering is Jesus Christ, the blood of that lamb, the broken body and pierced and bruised and battered and beaten and striped body that was cursed by being put on that cross for you. Everything in this world was taken care of by Jesus Christ on his way to that cross and on that cross and then through his 
going to the grave, shedding his blood and going to the grave, everything after this world was taken care of. As he is, so are we in this world. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Father, today in Jesus' name, I pray for everyone hearing and seeing this message. I pray that you impart to them peace and joy and the grace of God through the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And if there's anyone that has not yet received Jesus, Father, open their eyes today to see him. Open their hearts to believe and to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Heal every one of your children. Supply every one of your children. Uh, uh, restore and renew every one of your, your children. Re rejuvenate them in their strength and in their youth, in the, every part of their bodies, their bones, their joints, the marrows, the internal organs, the eyes, the ears, the skin, the hair, everything. Lord, renew us today and give us an excitement to tell people about Jesus Christ, that human, that flesh and blood human, that fleshy McFlesh guy that died for us.